Hi. Welcome to Talking and Reading from Japan. I'm your host, Itemi Woods. Here, I read part of, part of the book I wrote and talk about it or anything I feel like talking to you. I hope you enjoy with me. Today, I read an episode from one of my one of my books titled An Old Tree in Kyoto. Today's episode is called Ice Cream Man. This episode is about my uncle's encounter with one of my classmates. Ice Cream Man When my uncle got married with my mother's cousin by an arranged marriage, my grandfather paid for his new house. He was proud of having his own dark room in the house. His hobby was photography, and he used to have the latest models of a camera. He planned to enrich his hobby by developing pictures by himself. After he quit a job at a gas station, he found a job supplying ice cream to small candy stores. He finished drifting jobs, had two daughters, and finally settled down. I visited his house with my parents one day and found that his dark room had been converted into a family closet. He explained he no longer spent so much time taking pictures as before with a, with a weak smile. Several years passed and I had become a student at a private Catholic school. The school was a prestigious girls' school that included from the elementary school to the college. I had been there from the junior high and had acted as if I had been from a rich and noble family to fit in. By the time I advanced to the high school, I had been quite popular among the snobbish students. Most of their parents are rich, and they looked down some students whose parents weren't so rich. One of those girls we looked down came to me and said, I saw your uncle yesterday. And she started talking about my uncle to my friends. Do you know what her uncle is? He's an ice cream man, she giggled. Her parents ran a grocery store, and my uncle went there to refill their ice cream case. He noticed her school uniform and told her I was his niece. Her point was that I was a niece of a funny, loud, rude ice cream supplier in spite of my snobbish attitude. She went on spreading her encounter with my uncle to other students, and they all laughed at me. I was indignant rather than embarrassed. That was today's episode. As I have told here before, I lived with my uncle until I was eight years old because we, <clears throat> my parents, my sister, my uncle, and me 
all lived with my grandparents under one roof. And so until my uncle got married, he lived with us. So he was like a, a, my older <clears throat> brother, rather than an uncle. But his, it was his character that was annoying all of our family because he was loud, noisy, <clears throat> rude, and he jested all the time and uh, was like, I, when I lived with him, I didn't like him at all. I couldn't figure out how an adult behaved such a foolish way. And so he, he was so friendly and nice, but just, it was, he was too annoying to me. He made jokes and made fun of me and stole my candies and he, I just didn't want to be around him. So when he got married and left home, I was so relieved because I no longer had to live and spend time with him. And uh, he um, all his life, he drifted jobs, and uh, my grandfather was so worried about him, about him and his future. And uh, after he moved into the new house, my grandfather bought for him. Um, even that, uh, even after that, he changed uh, his jobs from one to another, and uh, but a few years after a few years passed um he finally settled down as a um, as an ice cream supplier at the the that um refilled local grocery stores and um by that time, he had two daughters, um, and uh, but he to um, support his family, he gave up his hobby and uh, converted his proud. Um, precious dark room into a closet at his house. So I was, I felt a little bit sad for him because I knew how much he loved photography and 
he to me he he didn't seem to be a family man at all he it was the farthest thing that he could be and but he did his best for his own family and settled down finally he stopped uh, drifting jobs and then uh, during those years I um, became a student of a Catholic school that was quite prestige, uh, rich prestige, uh, private school at um, my, uh, the area where I grew up. And I had been struggling to fit in because my family was a farmer and um, while other students' families are extremely rich and um, some girls are from big hospitals, I mean, her, her family owned the big hospital in the area, or uh, some girls are from the family who ran a very famous um, chain stores, uh, restaurants, or famous companies and so uh, I couldn't um, catch up with them no way they were too far richer than my family so I I just couldn't fit in, but um, it was excruciating to be a student in that kind of school. So I needed to find a solution to um, go to school without agonizing, uh, suffering some way because I go to, I went to school every day so I couldn't do, I couldn't repeat a day like a uh, black sheep of a school and I couldn't continue to go to school like that and I uh, I figured out some solution and that solution was acting acting as if I was one of them and uh, I hid uh, my family's business I hid that I was from a farmer's family and uh, I just and uh, um, I changed my behavior, manners, um, way of my moving, everything um, 
to uh, imitate other girls to fit in. And uh, that scheme worked and uh, I became, I was able to become popular and I was able to belong to a cool group that consisted of um, very uh, snobbish, cool girls. And uh, I was, um, I went to school as a, a different person from my true self every day. But I was young and stupid enough to believe that was the only way for me to make it through my school days. And uh, it went well. Um, my scheme went well, had been working until this girl, one of my classmates, coincidentally encountered, coincidentally saw my uncle when he was working. He refilled ice cream to a grocery store that that girl's family uh, ran. And my uncle uh, spotted her and recognized she was a student of the school I also went to because of the uniform. And the school uniform was quite um, unique and he easily knew she was also a student of the school. And that um, Catholic school I went to was quite small and uh, um, the total um, number of the students were so un were really small, and so he asked her what grade she was in, and found that she was in the same grade I was in, and so she, he, my uncle. Um, told my name and she knew me and those in that encounter was um, not just a small talk or chattering to her it was a uh, big scoop for her because she with that encounter uh, she found um, what kind of family I was from because she saw one of my relatives and she um, thought she understood um, my true self. Uh, she 
she thought she knew who I really was. And uh, at school, she was like, uh, a journalist or a reporter who got the biggest scoop of the century and she circulated the her encounter all the almost all the students around me and she told them how um, uncivilized my uncle was, how funny he was, how rude he was, how noisy and uh, uh, foolish he was. And, uh, um, and her point, the center of her point was that I was his relative. I was his niece, so uh, what she really wanted to circulate to everyone was I was I was not one of these um, one of the girls here, but I was um, from the uncivilized um, family that was not so rich. And she, it was her big scoop and she wanted to tell that everyone And uh, she, it was like she discovered uh, what she really, what I really was. And she wanted to, wanted to mm, let everyone know about it. I, of course, I was embarrassed, but I, it was my fury, my anger overrid my embarrassment because I thought, what she was saying was wrong. She apparently laughed about uh, someone who worked as a as an ice cream ice cream supplier, and. I thought what what was wrong about being an ice cream supplier and that feeling made me so angry cuz I knew um I knew how much effort my uncle made to work at that ice cream company by giving up his dark room and giving up his hobby and he managed to focus on supplying his uh, supporting his own family and 
his his way, his um the the only way he uh eventually found to support his family was to work as an ice cream supplier and he worked so hard as one. However, uh, that my uh, classmate laughed at him, which meant she laughed at what he did for his family. And I was indignant for that. And, uh, but, um, um, everyone else, uh, who heard that, uh, uh, who heard her scoop, um, was, uh, similarly laughed at me and my friends, classmates, other girls, every, everyone who happened to hear that, hear about that girl's encounter with my uncle laughed at me. And so they felt the same way as that girl felt. And I thought I found uh, what kind of school I went to. I I had tried to fit in, but the place where I was, I worked so hard to fit in was that kind of um, atrocious, um, stupid, foolish people went to. So the girls around me were um, all that um, same similar girls who left my uncle and uh, I felt like I found the mm, the school's true color with that incident. And my uncle wasn't a smart guy. He never he had never taught me anything. He, uh, he had never um, say anything. He had never said anything illuminative or educational or anything. He, he was just l laughing and being funny. So I didn't um, hear... Uh, him saying saying something um, something um, something 
good or something so、uh, illuminative. He was kind, so he was kind enough to get me many toys when I was、uh, small, but he didn't teach me anything. But I think、uh, with this incident, he taught me, he told me. Uh, the true color of my school and、uh, true color of my、um, friends. What kind of、mm, what kind of place I was trying to fit in? How wrong. It had been. I think that was my uncle finally taught me. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for listening.、Um, I hope you come back soon here and join me again. I'm Hidemi Woods. Until next time, take care and be well.